Video recording now. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my panel on Indigenous Cultures and Feature Animation. So, I hope everyone's had a good blur con. So, I'm going to give a very short disclaimer. I am not a scholar or a professor on the subject I am about to present. All sources have come from my education experiences from childhood to college age and online research. Information that was also borrowed is also borrowed from behind the scenes facts from the various movies I will talk about here in my panel. Some information I will talk about may, be, may not be 100% accurate, so please watch and listen with an open mind. Minor spoilers will be mentioned in some of the films I will talk about. What does indigenous mean? Adjective, originating or occurring naturally in a particular place that or something that is named. So for example, we have various indigenous people here. We have, the indige we have an indigenous person in New Guinea. We have an indigenous people of in Siberia. And that woman over there with the tattoos, she is an Ainu. The Ainu are the indigenous people of Japan. They live, in the, they live mostly in the northern part of Hokkaido. But the reason why I'm presenting this panel is because growing up, there were some films that, act, that I actually found very fascinating and helped me inspire and inspired me to become a history major and also have an interest in anthropology. So let me get to my introduction. So about myself, I am half African American and half Filipino with Irish, Chinese, and South Asian ancestry. So I've been to many different countries in the world. I've been to the Philippines, I've been to China, I've been to Japan, I've been to the United Kingdom, I've been to Canada, I've been to Honduras, Belize, and Mexico. So why am I doing this panel? Because I had a fascination for indigenous cultures and ancient civilizations since I was a kid. I remember my mom used to take me on trips to the Museum of Natural History at the Smithsonian. I was amazed at all the different displays that they had and I was also interested in reading about this stuff in books and watching a lot of documentaries on PBS and History Channel. So without any further ado, let's get started on, on the representation of indigenous cultures within feature animation. Let's go to the, ver let's go to the very beginnings. The earliest animated feature that had indigenous cultures were depicted in the films Saludos Amigos and the Three Caballeros. In the first segment of the film, Saludos Amigos, Donald Duck visits an Andean village in Peru. The animators were quite accurate at the time documenting and drawing the native peoples of Peru. A film like Saludos Amigos was revolutionary for its time because it was one of the first Disney films to depict a non-Western culture. It's a film you should watch. Both Saludos Amigos and The Three Caballeros are important forerunners for future Disney films like Coco and Encanto because of its representation of Latin American culture and peoples. Might I also mention The Emperor's New Groove because Saludos Amigos also has llamas. I will talk more about The Emperor's New Groove coming up. So here is a picture of what the animation style looked like in Sal Saludos Amigos in the late Titicaca, in the late Titicaca sequence. That film, fun fact, it's actually one of the shortest Disney films ever made. It only ran for, it ran for about 40, close, clo up close to 40, up to maybe 50 minutes. It's a good film. You can definitely find it on Disney Plus. But, what I, liked about, what I liked about the film Saludos Amigos and the Three Caballeros was for something that came out in the 1940s, it was a very experimental and, a bit almost, and had almost like a documentary feel. But the Three Caballeros actually felt like a legitimate, actually felt like a legitimate Disney film with a plot where you have Donald interacting with Jose and Pancho the Rooster. But Disney really did really did have a fascination for the world at the time and for liking different cultures, which is why I personally enjoyed these films. So now we're going to move on to the to, to Native Americans and Inuits in animated features. So three films I will talk about in this section. I will talk about Pocahontas, Brother Bear, and Spirit. All right. So Pocahontas. 
Unfortunately, the real Pocahontas story is very this actually is actually a very depressing story. My favorite Disney film growing up. Unfortunately, if you took fourth grade social studies, you will not be happy to learn the truth about the real Pocahontas history. The film deviates from the historical material. Pocahontas and John Smith were actually not lovers. Smith wanted to do business with wanted to do business trading with the Powhatan Indians and Chief Powhatan. In real life, Pocahontas did not marry Cocoam, but was later kidnapped. She did marry John Rolfe, like in Pocahontas too. Pocahontas never made it back to England. She died while overseas, either from food poisoning or old world diseases. In real life, a young Pocahontas did not try to save, did not, uh, did, did try to save the Jamestown settlers from starving. The real, po the real Chief Powhatan had many daughters and many wives. Unfortunately, he had passed away years later. After, he died. He passed away years later after Pocahontas died while she was visiting England. But one thing I do like about Disney's Pocahontas was I did like the soundtrack, and I did like that it was a it was a very dark film that came out in retrospect, and very mature, like Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame, which came out years later. Pocahontas, to me. Shows of uh, show the issues of uh, show the issues of prejudice and ways people can work together despite differences. Just like what the real Pocahontas did when she act, when she was trying to save the lives of the Englishmen in the Jamestown colony. But unfortunately, in the real history, things went down south pretty bad for the for the Powhatans and other unfortunately Native American tribes in in what would become the United States. But what I liked about Pocahontas was Grandmother Willow, because in in Native American culture they do believe every 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 being has a every creature, pardon me, every every animal is significant, and they do believe a lot in they do worship nature a lot and believe that a lot of things are sacred. So there are some things that are actually good about Pocahontas, but unfortunately some people may not appreciate Pocahontas today because some aspects may not may be a little bit too sensitive to talk about, but I think Pocahontas is an excellent Disney film to show to show to kids. So now I'm gonna move on to Spirit, all right? So, the most, all right, this underrated Dreams, DreamWorks film did a good job capturing the beauty and scenery of the American West. The plot of Spirit involves a young Mustang cult who grew up into adulthood, who is captured by Union Marshals, and later befriends a young Plains Indian teenager called Little Creek. The film does an excellent job. The film does an excellent the film does an excellent job not giving the voices to the horses, but instead tells the story through music and limited dialogue. Plains Indians did adapt horse riding from the Spanish when they brought horses to the American West. Fun fact, there used to be a native horse population in prehistoric in prehistoric North America, but they but they were extinct until modern European horses were brought to the Americas. Relationships between US Marshals and Native Amer and natives in the Plains regions of the American West were not perfect. Eventually US Marshals discouraged Plain Plains Indians from hunting nomadically. However, the culture of Plains Indians still lives on today in their dances, art, and music. And Spirit is definitely a film that I wish I had appreciated more as a kid because I really like the art style and I really like the music. So they mix a little bit of Native American music with some 80s style rock. And that film I consider to be one of DreamWorks Hidden hidden gems following the El Road to El Dorado, but I will mention the Road to El Dorado in a little bit. All right. So how are we looking on time? Oh, all right, good. All right. Next film we're gonna do Brother Bear. This is a Disney film that everybody hates, and I don't and I don't get why. Probably Disney's most underrated film. I grew up a lot on Brother Bear. This film is based on the cultures of the Inuit people who live in Canada, Alaska, and Greenland. According to Inuit mythology, the Inuit believed that the Northern Lights or Aurora Borealis was the home of their ancestors and spirits. The transformation scene in Brother Bear, where Kenai turns into a bear, illustrates Inuit mythology. Also to note, the eagle is not a predominant bird in Inuit folklore. It is the raven, because there is a scene in the movie where an e where 
So if you understand the plot of Brother Bear, what happened in the film was was the was Kenai, the main protagonist, his brother was accidentally killed, but was accidentally killed in an ice was accidentally killed off a cliff when he, when when Kenai was trying to hunt another bear. So what happened was when the brother died, his spirit became an eagle. And what happens is the eagle, Kenai's brother, lifts up lift, lifts up Kenai and transforms him into a bear. So, a totem is a spirit is a spirit being, sacred object, or symbol of a tribe, clan, family, or individual. Some Native American tribes traditions provide that each person relates to nine different animals that will accompany him or her through life, acting as guides. So, in the film Brother Bear, Kenai earns the totem of love, which was personified from the bear. This becomes the main plot point in the film when he transforms into a bear, as I mentioned early. So one thing I liked about Brother Bear was I actually did like the art style in this film. I was super obsessed with this film when I was a kid. I liked the music. I think Phil Collins and Tina and Tina Turner, I think they did a good job make, with the music. So when I saw Brother Bear the first time in the theater when I was 13, I thought that film was phenomenal. And I kind of feel like Disney Disney Animation after after Brother Bear kind of went downhill for a little bit until the tens. Again, that's just my opinion. But I think Brother Bear is a film that I think everybody should see at least once. It is great. I would avoid Brother Bear too, in my opinion, because it's just another cash grabber. All right, and here's an example of a totem pole that is photographed in the Museum of Natural History, which is found predominantly a lot in Pacific Northwest cultures. All right, so we're gonna move on to Mesoamerica, and we're gonna move on to the Andes. All right, the next two films I'm gonna talk about are The Road to El Dorado and The Emperor's New Groove. All right, believe it or not, the real El Dorado, lo the real location of El Dorado was not in Central America, but in South America. It was in the country of what would become Colombia. In the film, two Spanish stowaways, two Spanish, two Spanish convents stow away to the New World and pretend to be gods to impress the natives of El Dorado. In actual history, Hernan Cortes also fooled the Aztecs into thinking he was their god. As a matter of fact, when the Aztecs first saw a horse, they thought Cortes riding a horse were the same being. This was how the natives of El Dorado viewed view Tulio and Miguel when they were riding the horse in the film. The film combines both the cultures and architectures of the Aztec and Mayan civilizations. Unfortunately, in both Aztec and Mayan society, human sacrifice was the norm, but only 1% of the population was sacrificed. In the film, Tulio and Miguel discouraged the chief of El, of El Dorado not to sacrifice people and both men were afraid they'd be killed off if they found out that they were fakes. That's one of the major plot points of the film, not being discovered. However, they eventually get foiled. Only Chal and later Tits Kelkon discover that Tulio and Miguel are not gods when they saw them bleed. The film also depicts the villainous high priest Tetsifal Khan controlling a giant stone jaguar. In real history, the Mayan warriors associated themselves with jaguars. So one thing I want to say about the film El Dorado, it was one of those, a like spirit, it was one of those DreamWorks films that I overlooked and eventually, and I eventually um, grew on me. But El Dorado did, did do a pretty good job capturing what Mesoamerican culture was like. And again, the music was done. The music was done by the Lion King writer, Lion King singer, I believe it was, Elton John. So that, that movie had potential. Now, fun, funny story, both The Road to El Dorado and The Emperor's New Groove came out in the same year. There was actually a controversy as to which movie did did best and which movie had the, had the most rating. However, a lot of people want however a lot of people behind the scenes when they're working on Kingdom of the Sun and were working on El Dorado did wanted to avoid conflicts of interest, but that's kind of a story on its own. So, 
The Emperor's New Groove, one of the funniest movies and a film I didn't like at first until I understood the humor. The Emperor's New Groove is a story about a selfish emperor who is transformed into a llama by his advisor Yzma and learns humility from a peasant named Pacha. The main character Cusco is named after the capital of the Incan Empire, which still exists today as a city in Peru. Pacha, the secondary protagonist, is named after Pachacuti, who was, a very, who was a very important historical leader of the Incan Empire. The film, depicts city, the film depicts cities, the use of llamas, roads, and bridges, which were all used by the ancient Incan people before the Spanish arrival. Pacha's village in the film is loosely based on Machu Picchu. Cusco's palace in the film is shaped like the Incan god Inti. Fun fact: in the original fun fact, in the original Emperor's in the original pitch for Emperor's New Groove, the film, the villain Isma had a larger role and wanted to block the sun's light. In the Incan, in Incan culture, the sun was sacred. To them, there are still festivals held to the sun god and celebrated in modern day Peru. These festivals take place during the winter solstice to thank the gods for the harvest. What I have to say about both El, both El Dorado and the Emperor's New Groove, they actually may be interested in learning more about pre-Columbian cultures. Because that's something that I found interesting as a kid, learning more about Aztecs, Mayans, Incas, because even though they're very, the, the societies are actually very different, but there are some similarities in the way they, in the way they run. Like, for one thing, they didn't have a lot of domestic animals until, you know, Europeans came. Because the only domestic animal that was available at the time in, in the New World was the llama. And also, there, was no, there were no wheels. But they did build a lot of elaborate structures, which were shown in the films El Dorado and the Emperor's New Group. Alright? But one thing, I think a reason why I didn't like both films was because I didn't understand the humor when I was a kid. I feel like a film like El Dorado and a film like The Emperor's New Brew, I feel like you, if you watch it when you're older, you'll understand the humor more. Because I started liking those films more when I was in middle school, not so much in elementary school, because I just, did, I guess my taste wasn't as sophisticated. Because growing up, I just wanted to watch anything that was related to Pokemon or traditional Disney. But um, that being said, I think both films are, import, are cult classics. So now we're gonna move on to Pacific Island cultures, all right? I will be talking about the film Lilo and Stitch and the film Moana. By the way, happy 20th anniversary to the film Lilo and Stitch, one of the most popular films from the 2000s. I was in sixth grade when this classic came out. Lilo is a lonely and eccentric little girl who lives on the Hawaiian island of Kauai. She later adapts and befriends a rogue alien named Stitch. The film does a good job showcasing the beauty and realities of the Hawaiian Islands. The concept of Ohana is used both, is used both in Hawaiian and Maori cultures, believe it or not, because the Hawaiian people look out for one another regardless of bloodline. Surfing and hula dancing were not entertainment for native Hawaiians. They were considered sacred rituals. As a matter of fact, there is one scene in the film where after Nani got fired from working at a restaurant, she is insulting her old job, calling it a fake luau. A luau in actual Hawaiian culture were celebrations for weddings, birthdays, and graduations. Historically, before Hawaii was westernized, native Hawaiian men and women ate separately at a luau. At, at a luau. And one thing I do like about Lilo and Stitch was it does talk a lot about social issues. Because if you do, if you take away the scenes with Stitch, it's actually a legitimate film that talks about some serious issues. Because Nani, she's not a Disney princess. She's an ordinary young woman who is trying to help, trying to give Lilo the, the best life she can. Because as you know in the film, her parents died tragically in a car accident. But unfortunately, today in modern Hawaii, there is a controversy as to whether or not the indigenous cultures are going to remain or if that people group or if that culture is going to disappear, which is why Hawaii depends a lot on tourism and people coming to their country. And fun fact, Hawaii is actually the most expensive state to visit. 
So next, I'm going to move on to Moana. The film had the best soundtrack, in my opinion, just like Brother Bear. As a matter of fact, the composer Mark Mencina also did the score for Brother Bear. Moana is the last original film of the Disney Animation Revival, before we had all those sequels, like, Bro like, like Ralph Breaks the Internet and Frozen 2. I will mention Frozen 2 in this panel in a bit. So, the film combines all of the Polynesian cultures and folklore, specifically the peoples of Fiji, Samoa, New Zealand, and Hawaii. Before Captain Cook, and long before Magellan, Austronesian peoples from the islands of Taiwan settled and navigated almost all the Pacific, almost all the Pacific islands. The song "We Know the Way" describes how Moana's ancestors were once voyagers. So, if you've seen the film Moana, the the plot of Moana is she goes out to she goes out to return the heart of Tafiti, and she and she understands that they have that they have to go on a voyage in order to find more supplies for the islands. But the father, but Moana's father, the chief, is, does not want Moana to go out, does not want Moana to go out to explore, believing that they have everything on their island. So, regarding a little bit of the historical facts connected to Moana, this was true because in actual history, Austronesian people did sail as far west as Madagascar and further southeast towards Easter Island near modern-day Chile. The character of Maui was considered a hero and trickster in Polynesian myths. In Hawaiian mythology, they have a volcano goddess known as Pele in the film Moan in, in the film. The main antagonist, Taka, that is Taka is the is the lava form of as a lava form of Tafihi before she became uh, before she as she be, before she became bad. Wait, was that right, Maddie? I think so. Tafihi, yeah. She became she became no, she became Taka after after she after she lost her heart. After she lost the heart of the ocean. So in the film the main antagonist, Taka, is based off of Pele. Taka was also based on Tapo, who which is the Maori goddess of the night. And fun fact, this picture of this boat right there, that is actually a ancient sailing ship in that I took when I was in Guam. So when I had a layover from Japan and I was traveling through the Philippines, I actually did see some ships similar to what ancient Polynesian sailors sailed on. And this one here, this picture right here, actually looks similar to the actually looks similar to the to the boat in in Moana in the in the film Moana that she drives. That pardon me, that that she steers. But Moana, I think, is a good film to watch. I feel like everyone everyone would enjoy that film. So, oh, we're looking good on time. All right, so next, I'm gonna move on to Frozen 2. Specifically, I wanna talk about the Sami people in Frozen 2. Frozen 2 is a sequel to Frozen, which came out six years before the second film. What I like about Disney's Frozen 2 is they showcase the indigenous people of Northern Scandinavia. Historically, the Sami people were originally a Eurasian nomadic group that migrated from the Ural Mountains. The Sami were very cordial to the Vikings historically. In the film, Frozen 2, it is revealed that Queen Iduna, Elsa and Anna's mother, was a North Aldrian. Historically, the Sami of Norway, Sweden, and Finland did remain pagan till at least the 18th century. The plot of Frozen 2 explains the building of a dam in North Aldra to keep Arendelle from flooding. This plot point in Frozen 2 ins was inspired by a true event in Norway in the 1970s when developers were trying to build on Sami sacred lands. The North Aldrian in Frozen 2, like the Sami of real life, are expert reindeer herders and use the reindeers for meat and clothing. Kristoff's outfit in Frozen and Frozen 2 is inspired by Sami fashion. Fun fact about the Sami, their language is not of European origin but of Asian, and their DNA is closer to the Basque people of Spain. Both groups are the oldest known ethnic groups in continental Europe. So, for those of you that might have seen Frozen 2, there was a bit, there. it, it was revealed that that the ancestors of Anna and Elsa were not so kind to the North Aldrian people because of their differences. So unfortunately in real life, 
with the Sami people of Norway and Sweden, there was forced assimilation among among those people groups, much similar to the to the indigenous people of North America and elsewhere in the world. And now we're going to get on to the shape shifting motif in these movies. All right, so. If one were to watch The Emperor's New Groove, Brother Bear, and Moana, you would notice a recurring theme. All three films are in an indigenous setting, and all three films involve the main character shape-shifting. In the films The Emperor's New Groove and Brother Bear, the main protagonists were all turned into animals in order to learn a lesson. In contrast, in contrast to Moana, since Maui is a demigod, he has the power to control his transformation. Thanks to his magical hook, thanks to his magical hook. However, one could argue that Maui had learned from his past mistakes from stealing the heart of the ocean from Te Fiji. One could say that shape-shifting motif in these films could harken back to the main ideas in indigenous folklores of humans' connections in nature. There are lots of Native American, African, and Asian tales of people turning into animals coming from superstitious beliefs. Because there are, in some, in some beliefs, in, I believe in Taiwanese folklore, they believe that after a person dies, they could become an animal. I'm not quite sure if it has something to do with a reincarnation or some sort of, some sort of other spiritual thing, but it's a very fascinating belief. But then again, a lot of a lot of indigenous people around the world they 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 feel that they are more of the participants it, that they they like to view themselves as participants in nature, not just as conquerors, so to say. So, I am ahead of schedule, so I could maybe talk a little bit more on on the subject on na on on native people represented. So, I think. Let me think about let me think so i think brother bear is i think brother bear is 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 a good is a good film to show to all ages because of the music now the plot may be a little maybe a little weak for maybe a little weak maybe a little bit weaker compared to other disney films because when it first came out some people thought it was too much of a lion king copycat but I can't really compare that film to The Lion King because I feel like both films are very different. And Pocahontas is a very unique Disney princess film because it's not based on a fairy tale, it's based more on actual history. But again, if you watch a film like Pocahontas, you're not supposed to be learning about history, it's supposed to be entertainment. And I think, I think it did a good job. And as a matter of fact, when I was a kid, I actually did visit James the Jamestown on a field trip in fifth grade, which I thought was a very fascinating place to visit. And I feel like the real Jamestown is something everyone should visit. As a matter of fact, across the pond in England, they actually do have a statue of Pocahontas, and she did have a grave. Unfortunately, in real life, the real grave of Pocahontas was destroyed in a fire. All right, we still have 20 minutes left. So. What about the film Moana? So, regarding the film Moana, they actually, that film is actually, was actually did get crit critical acclaim. And the music in Moana is, does a good job incorporating indigenous, incorpor does a good job incorporating indigenous elements from, from, from all the islands with the, and also does a good job incorporating all the, Incorporating all, all the mixture of all the music music styles from the Pacific Islands because there's almost kind of like a fest a, a festive vibe to Hawaiian music and to music uh, played all over the Polynesian islands, and also Lin Manuel who did the lyrics for Hamilton also did the lyrics for for Moana, and Lilo and Stitch also has a, also has a pretty decent has a pretty good soundtrack. What I liked about Lilo and Stitch was hearing. Was hearing the was hearing the was hearing Hawaiian music was hearing Hawaiian music was hearing Hawaiian language being sung in the opening title. Same with Moana that I liked because I felt like the I felt like the opening title for 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 for, for, Mo, for Moana and for Lilo and Stitch and for Brother Bear felt quite epic. And let's see what else we can say. So twenty minutes. Um. 
I really don't want to get to the conclusion yet because I feel like we, I feel like I can cover a little more. But does anybody have any questions? Uh, what's your question? Um, yes. So you spoke about the um, challenges in terms of historical accuracy and translation of language. What other challenges do you uh, see in terms of um, Hollywood interpreting indigenous culture and animation? Well, for one thing, one issue that I do find is they don't hire, uh, they should hire more people of indigenous descent. So I will get, I will, I'll actually talk about that. So some problems one could find when watching these films is you don't hear a lot about indigenous actors. However, Pocahontas, when it came out, they did have actual Native American actors play it. As a matter of fact, Irene B Bernard, she's half Inuit and half Mesti. Mesti is a mix of French and, and Native and Native Canadian. Métis. She Métis. Oh, thank you, thank you. But yes, she is. She is. She is Métis. But unfortunately, Irene Bernard, she been get. She had been getting into some trouble um, lately. So. That, that involved the law, so she she is. I mean, I want to. I mean, the thing is, I want to suspend. I want to suspend the the problems from the art because I feel like she, I feel like she's a good actress. As a matter of fact, Irene Bedard, you can actually watch her in another film called Smoke Signals. Smoke Signals is probably one of the most underrated movies ever made. It's about two Native American. It's about two Native American boys who go out, go out the reservation to retrieve their father's old car and tries to re reconcile with a problem that happened in the past. That's an old film that I saw back when I was a senior in high school. It is definitely a good film to watch. And a, another film that I watched that involved indigenous cultures was a film called Whale Rider. It starred, it starred a Maori New Zealand actress named Keisha Castle. She played in the movie, she played the Virgin Mary in the film Nativity. That is also a good film, Whale Rider. As a matter of fact, I need to check out that film again. And again, it took, with the issues they talk about Whale Rider is trying to reconnect with your roots and not forget who you are. So another film that I saw that involved indigenous cultures was a film that I saw in one of my college classes in in my tour, in my senior year at Towson, was I saw a film called Even the Rain. Even the Rain was a film about a Mexican producer that travels to Bolivia when Bolivia was having a water was having a water crisis. So they were trying to actually make a film. So basically, the movie is about a film about a film being made where in the film they're actually trying to make a dramatization of Christopher Columbus. And they have the Bolivians play the Native Americans. I didn't see the whole. I didn't see the whole film, but I thought it looked interesting. I need to look up. I need to look that film up because it actually sounds very, very, very fascinating. But one thing I will give credit for these films is they do a good job actually doing research about indigenous cultures, and they do a good job. Like, it, well, they do a good job incorporating music, and they do a good job with the art style. And one thing I'm glad that they've come, come a long way is to show them as being sympathetic and not as villainous. Because unfortunately, in a lot of old films, they always depict a lot of indigenous or non-white characters as being, you know, savages. But unfortunately, that's a very outdated term. Because in reality, they were not they were not savages. They were actually a very sophisticated and advanced culture. As a matter of fact, a book that I think everybody should read is a book called 1491. 1491 is a is a history and also talk, touches a little bit on science. It actually talked about civilization before the arrival of Europeans in the New World. Did you know that the population of people in the Americas was actually larger than people living in medieval Europe? There were more people in Mexico than there were people in medieval France during the Dark Ages. Mm -hmm. And their civilization was actually quite was actually quite advanced and sophisticated. As a matter of fact, indigenous people did did trade, did did do a lot of trading before Europeans came. Because they discovered maize, that's a fancy name for corn. They discovered corn in the American Southwest that actually had its origin in Mexico. 
And if you want to know something really mind-blowing, there were actually discovered chicken bones that were indigenous to the Pacific Islands that were brought to Chile before the Spanish came. So there was actually contact between Polynesians and Native American groups in both North and South America. Because if you think about it, the Pacific Ocean is very big with all those islands. But the Hawaiian Islands are actually very far from, are very far from the mainland. Because the closest mainland to the closest, the closest state to the, to the closest state to Hawaii would probably be California. All right? It's Hawaii. Hawaii. Thank you. Hawaii. Thank you. All right, so we, all right. all right, so I guess I'm gonna get into the conclusion. All right, so all these classic and contemporary Disney and DreamWorks films did an excellent job capturing the beauty and dignity of these indigenous groups. I would caution that these films are not educational, but viewed as entertainment. The best place to learn about indigenous cultures is reading books, visiting museums, and traveling to these people's regions or, or, or country. I will not negate the hard work and research these animators, these animators and writers did when they made these films. Disney animators have spoken with actual Powhatan descendants before, the, before they made Pocahontas and, and even visited the Jamestown settlement. Regarding the film Moana, regarding the film Moana, they did, visit, they did visit the Pacific Islands of Fiji and Samoa to research Moana's boats. The research, the research trips of Disney animators began way back when, with Disney's 1942 film Saludos Amigos. These movies can inspire children to learn about other cultures. We would hope that these people's groups will be around for generations to come so we can preserve their stories, customs, and arts. It's nice to see an animated film that's not just about a princess, but also films that showcase peoples of the world and their folklore. In Western folklore, humans have dominance over nature. In indigenous folklore, humans are seen, are seen as participants of nature. Films like Pocahontas and The Road to El Dorado are the reasons I studied history and anthropology in my undergraduate, in my undergraduate years of college. So, Thank you for coming and enjoy the rest of BlurCon. And as Maui says, you're welcome. And, and now I will leave it to the audience for a Q&A because we still have 10 minutes to spare. All right, so in, okay. uh, in, yes. Okay, I, yeah, one, one more question. I'm curious, are there um, uh, animated filmmakers, animation filmmakers outside of the United States, outside of Hollywood, that are making the kinds of uh, films that are historically accurate, and so forth and so on. Um, I cannot quite, I can't quite answer that question, but I uh, guess. No, I have not seen Shaman King, but I've heard about it as when I was a kid. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you're familiar with the anime Hunter Hunter. The character with the the character with the blonde hair and who wears kind of like the kind of the the kind of the robe on the front. His culture is 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 heavily is inspired by the Ainu. As a matter of fact, the film Princess Mononoke. I kind of wonder if the character of San could possibly be be an Ainu character. But again, I'm talking about indigenous cultures represented in American animation, not outside. However, I did see a very old Facebook post. I don't know what country was doing this, but somebody was actually trying to make an animated film about Mapuche culture. The Mapuche are the indigenous people of Chile. I would like to research more who's doing, who's making that film, because I actually, I actually like the art style. It looks similar to, it looks similar to an Irish film called the, called um I think the tale of Kales or something. Oh Song of the Song of the Sea, but I don't think I don't think that's the same animation studio, but I think that's great that they're showcasing that they're showcasing more. 
But some some backlash about the film Pocahontas was some people did not like how they were portrayed. Some some Powhatan scholars did not like how they were portraying the Powhatan natives because they because in real life the Powhatan natives didn't completely reject the English settlers because they were already interacting with other European settlers that were there. As a matter of fact, there were Spanish there were there were Spanish explorers in Virginia and Maryland working very cordial with the Native American groups. Um, yes, I know. Thank you, thank you. But um, I think I think the film I think the films are great. I think I think all these films are great. But well, actually, as a matter of fact, the actor Dwayne the Rock Johnson is actually half Samoan and half black. So there is a plus for having someone cast as someone for having him cast as Maui, and I think he did a good job in that film. As a matter of fact, the main actress who plays Moana, Ali Aliki, I can't I can't say her name, but believe it or not, she I actually knew someone before before I became a teacher, I actually knew someone who actually knew her. She actually came from she actually came from the hometown of someone who of someone who I met a while back at a, at another event. So talk about your small worlds. But she's she's not in a lot of she's not in a lot of stuff which is which is a shame but she she should act in more things as a matter of fact um ali did play ariel in the in disney's in disney's little mermaid live which was which was pretty which was okay which was okay uh -huh. but um let me see tia carrera is actually mixed race tia carrera who played nani she's mixed filipino she's mixed spanish and she's mixed chinese and i think i believe she's mixed native hawaiian mm -hmm. so there there there's a bit of a plus as a matter of fact the guy who played chief pohatan was played by russell means i'm not sure if anybody remembers the actor russell means russell means was a very predominant actor in in a lot of in a lot of cinema back in the eighties and nineties, where he did play a lot of native, where he did play um, a lot of Native American characters. Now, a film that I saw a while back, it's not it's not animated, it's live action. A film is called Last of the Mohicans. That's actually a pretty good film. It came out, I believe, in nineteen ninety two. It's it's a good film, but I must warn you though, it's a bit violent. It talks about one of the last. It, it talks about one of the last, uh, last independent tribes living in the American Northeast, what is now today New York State. I feel like that's a that's a real that's 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 a better film to watch if you really want to learn about history. But um, again, I'm trying to avoid talking a lot about the sadness about what how these people struggles. I want it to be about celebration. I want it to be about illustrating how they view the world because the world is not just told in a white european perspective we need to understand that the world is told in a non-white perspective because some things are going to be wrong in translation the way we view things yes ma'am how would you give advice to someone who's making a story or um writing a book and mainly about indigenous people from maybe not even america but um outside of america like say people who are indigenous to uh, Mongolia or maybe even indigenous to Australia, how what advice would you give them to, for making stories about those kinds of people? Uh, just do your research. Just uh, read up, read about what they what they did. Um, talk to some, maybe even maybe make friends or maybe talk to someone of that of that descent. But as I mentioned before, as a kid, because I didn't grow up playing a lot of video games or watching a lot of cable TV, knowledge was my entertainment, which is why I enjoyed watching all of these films growing up as a kid. And even to this day, it inspired me to learn more about history. And it's just made, it just made up who I am. Because growing up, I kind of felt like a little bit like a little Indiana Jones, because I always had this fascination for exotic and foreign stuff. As a matter of fact, when I was a little kid, I used to I like I used to have the Lego sets and I still have some of the minifigures. I had a Lego set of the of the Western. I had a Lego Western um, Western set with the Native American with the, with the Indian chief, and I also had a pirate set which had the um, island natives. I actually found those found those characters more fascinating than the pirates and the cowboys. Again, that was just me growing up, but I was a very unusual kid. Back back in the day, I guess, sir.
I have, I was, I apologize for being late, but did you talk about the Twilight um, Indigenous um, actors in that, those movies? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Twilight is actually not, is actually not my taste, but they do, but they do have, they do have Indigenous people in Twilight. And one, one other show that I think you should watch, now I'm gonna warn you guys, there's a lot of, there's a lot of swearing, is a show called Reservation Dogs. It's a show that I watch religiously, and I hope there's another season. I watch it on, on Hulu. It is a very, it's a very entertaining show talking about the life of indigenous teenagers on a reservation in Oklahoma. That, I think, is a very interesting and hilarious show and if you want to read more about indigenous read more about native american literature i highly recommend sherman alexi sherman alexi is a writer of um i can't say the name right but he's a writer of um of spokoni of spokoni descent he is i read about i read his some of his work in my undergrad years when i was at towson he talks about some really some really interesting things. As a matter of fact, I think Sherman Alexi did the screenplay for Smoke Signals. But oh yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, wow, talk about your connections. But I remember reading this one this one short story where there was an alternative history where the government was actually saving Native Americans from a disease and they were rounding rounding them up so they would not so they would not um, be sick or be killed off. I thought that story was actually very, very fascinating. But we only have a few minutes left, so does anybody have any final say? We only have, we only have four minutes to spare. So does anybody have any other thoughts? Yes, sir. I just want to say that uh, Russell Means also was one of the leaders in the American Indian movement back in the Yes, day. yes. My history professor did mention that as well. Um, did, did mention that. Uh, let's see what else we can say for a little bit. Um, so I think the cultures of the Polynesian people is very fascinating because they did a lot to contribute to navigation and they were some of the earliest forerunners to exploring the Pacific Ocean long before Europeans came, which I think is, a, I feel like their culture and I feel like their civilization is very underrated in, in, um, in contributing to, to world studies. A very fascinating people group, uh, Pol the Polynesian people, and I have met some a while back, and they're actually pretty nice. They're actually they're actually pretty pretty nice and friendly. Um, let's see, three more minutes. But um, which film did you? Anybody has anybody ever seen these films? Okay, awesome, awesome. Yes, sir. I recommend a film called Wendigo. What, Nico? Yeah, that was based on uh, Native American uh, mythology, a creature that stalked. Oh, yes, Wendigo, yeah, I know, yeah, I know, I know about the Wendigo. And then I know there's a Skinwalker. Those are more, um, are they the same? Skinwalker and Wendigo or different? Similar. Okay. But, um, yeah, this stuff is cool. This stuff is fascinating. So I guess I'm going to be generous and just end the panel a bit a bit early. But I want to thank again everyone for coming and maybe you learned something. And again, I hope everyone enjoyed their time at BlurredCon. And I'm glad that you came to my panel. And just one thing I'm gonna, I want to say is don't stereotype people. Don't generalize. You want to be sure that you understand um, perspectives and people's differences because everyone in the world is unique yeah. All right and of course tolerance I'm going to promote tolerance and not try to disrupt diversity but instead learn to accept it mm -hmm. you're very welcome